Okay, we're going to make this as uh, close as 20 minutes as we can. This is a series to really focus on the osteoporosis poses. Before you begin, see that you have, I have a folding chair. I'm going to use this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that it's ready to go at the end of the mat. And I'm going to put it on this side with the, the back facing away from me. And then a block if you need, and also a strap. You'll need a strap at the very end of this uh, session. So we're going to begin see, uh, in, a, in the seated poses. So come down to the mat and extend your legs straight ahead, right off the mat. And then slide your hands back so that their palms are down right outside your hips. This is Dandasana, staff pose. And I think it's an excellent osteoporosis pose for sitting. So what you're going to do is press down into your hands and imagine that you're lifting your torso right up off the mat. Like you're almost just hovering the butt right on the mat between your hands. That allows you to really feel the length in your spine. The sacrum is gently drawing in and up. So it's lifting the low back into this natural arch, lengthening it. You can zip from pubic bone up to navel to kind of set up strength in the front to match the back. And just breathe into this. Our shoulders are really open here. And now you can release out of that. And we're going to begin in the twists. So I want you to slide your right foot up until it's just outside the knee. We're going to do this one by reaching up first with the right hand long so that we lengthen the whole side body. And then we're going to bring that arm down like it's a knife cutting right inside the leg. I have my upper arm elbow region right on the inside of the knee. I'm going to press into that and then bring my hand up. The other hand is going to slide behind you. Use this brace to really allow you to begin to twist over the extended leg. So we're twisting to the left. Breathe into this twist. And you're pressing down into the sit bones to lift the spine up. If you want to add a little cervical twist with it, you look over your back shoulder. You don't have to. You can look a little bit. You can look all the way. Whatever feels good. And once you've achieved this pose with a little effort, try to soften into the shape. And breathe. And then you're going to come back through the center, slide that foot down, slide the other foot up. So I have my left foot now right next to my right knee. The left arm is going to reach high to lengthen the whole side body, and then it's going to come down right inside this knee. I'm going to bring my forearm up to vertical and hug these two joints together. The right hand sliding around behind me, the right head of the arm bone is drawing back and behind so that it can open up this broad collarbone region. And again, we're twisting over the extended leg. So I am twisting to my right. Breathe into this. And if you want to add a little bit, you look over your shoulder. And then come back through the center. And we're now going to do a bent leg or a bent knee um, posture for twisting as well. So let's go ahead and draw the right ankle underneath the left leg. That's the first step. So my knee is just out forward. And if you want, you can bring your heel all the way to the outside of the hip. It kind of depends on what feels comfortable. The left foot is just going to stomp right up in front of me. If you have the flexibility and this feels comfortable, you can cross over. But sometimes that's just more than what people need. So I'm just going to have my foot right next to my knee in front. And this time, you're going to take the opposite hand of the front knee, which is my right, and I'm going to draw the right towards the, my, the, the left knee towards my right shoulder as I take my left hand around to the back. So I'm pulling this knee kind of across the midline as my ribs and belly twist and drag right over that thigh. And just breathe into this. And once you feel your sit bones really firmly planted, reach up from the sit bones. 
that you really have length in your spine. And then as you exhale, you continue to twist. Breathe into this. This is the folded knee twist. And then come back through the center. You're going to reverse. So I'm going to bring my left heel underneath my right thigh. And I'm going to bring my right knee inside, right next to my left knee. And this is an opposition twist. So the left and, um, hand comes to the outside of the right knee and it's going to draw that knee towards the shoulder. Right arm slides behind you, finger on the spider fingers, and really bring the head of the arm bone back so that it can begin to turn the whole thoracic spine. I can feel my ribs rotating to the right. Press your sit bones in and lift up. Exhale as you twist more. And again, if you want to add the head, that's up to you. It really depends on what feels, feels good in your body today. And breathe. Twists are a little tricky to breathe into because often you've kind of compressed a bit of the lungs as you make this twist. So do the best you can. It's like breathing into a corset. And now come back through the center and come on, extend your legs. So those are the two seated poses we're going to do. Now you're going to go into um, the, uh, go, we're going to get into the standing poses, but first we're going to do the four point poses. So I'm going to come down onto hands and knees. And here my four points are my knees and my hands. So I'm in this tabletop position to begin with. And just make yourself feel really solid. Draw that navel slightly in to the back body. Then with your toes tucked, you're going to press back to downward facing dog. And in downward facing dog, you're really pressing in your whole, all thing, ten fingers are pressing, and your heart is gently going back towards your kneecaps. Pulse your legs one bend, and then maybe the other just to stretch out the backs of the legs. But this is really good spinal extension. And from here, you're going to come forward into plank. Hold in plank for a breath. Drawing the tailbone down towards your heels. Then place your knees on the floor. And slowly, just come forward, straight arms first. Then bend the elbows and lower, chaturanga. Press back up. One more time, lower, chaturanga then lower all the way down to the floor. Inhale yourself up into a baby cobra. Exhale and lower. So we're going to do a, the version of locust pose, which is one of the osteoporosis poses. So I'm going to sweep my arms around and clasp them at my sacrum. I'm going to extend your legs long, gently kind of roll the, the thighs a little in towards each other, so really have more opening in the low back. Then inhale and lift. Here your fingers are clasped, but you're trying to pull your wrists apart and your hands are driving down your back body. You're gonna lift and hold. Gently tuck the tailbone if you can towards your heels to not overstress the low back. Some really good, good work for the spinal erectile muscles, which is why it's included in the osteoporosis pack. Breathe, breathe a little higher, and then slowly lower down to the floor. Place your hands at your ribs and press yourself back up to table pose. If you want, you can go back to an extended child's pose, which is a little less curvy round and a little more like downward facing dog. My head is just going to drop through my upper arms, but I'm not rounding my back as much. And then I'm going to come back up to table pose. So we're going to go into the standing poses next. So come into your table and step forward with your right foot. And get yourself comfortable here. Tuck the toes on the back left and inhale yourself up into a low lunge. This is the step one. Step two is to drop the left heel over and down. 
So that the whole back foot is down and is now parallel to the short edge of the mat. Walk your hands a little closer to your body, to your front foot, and then inhale yourself up. You can put your hand on your knee if that helps you, or you can just kind of swing yourself up. You're gonna come into warrior two. In this pose, we're gonna hold for again 30 seconds. You can spend some time thinking about pressing into the outer edge of the back foot and seeing that the knee is coming right over the second toe. Arms are extended long and you look over the index finger of the front arm. And breathe here. A gentle drawing down of the tailbone, lifting up of the, the navel. Keep you engaged in the hips. And breathe. And then we're going to straighten that front leg. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to go back and forth so we don't wear our legs out too much. So what I'm going to do here is turn my right foot so that it's now parallel to the, long, the short edge of the mat. And I'm going to turn my left foot open. So now I have exactly the same stance. I'm just going in the other direction. So here you sail your knee down and over the ankle. You sweep your arms up and allow them to float down shoulder height. Press in to that back outer edge of the foot, into that back outer heel. Then you just allow yourself to sink here and hold. This is another one of our osteoporosis poses just on the other side. Breathe into it. Find wherever you can a little bit of, of release. And then you're going to straighten your leg. And again, we're going to turn all 10 toes to face forward. And we're going to now turn the right foot back out again. You can bump your left toes slightly in or bump your heel slightly back so you have a bit of an angle back there. This time we're going right into triangle pose. So I'm going to sweep my arms up to lengthen the side body. Here's this lifting up. Float them down and then come over the front leg into your triangle pose. Here I'm putting my hand right on the inside of my shin and I'm really trying to back and soften this back hip crease. And you just enjoy this by just hanging out. Press into the mound of the big toe of the front foot so that you're not just jamming up the ankle but you're using the whole foot. This is another osteoporosis pose. Breathe into it. And then you're going to push forward with the shin to come back to your warrior two. This time we're going to go right into the next one, which is side angle pose. So here you come down, forearm comes down, slide the, uh, the elbow towards the knee, and then sweep across with the opposite arm. So your left arm is reaching, and so is your left leg, and they're in opposition. Here the palm faces up, and I'm turning my ribs, turning my body in so that I'm getting a bit of a twist as well as a long stretch. This is side angle pose. Breathe into it. And when we have a little bit more of this, we're going to straighten our leg and come back up. So come back up, straighten the leg. And this time we're going to turn and do the same two uh, series on the other side. So draw so that all ten toes face forward. Turn the left toes out. So they're along the long edge of the mat. You can bump your right heel back a little. We're going to sweep the arms up to lengthen the side body and float them down. Straight leg in the front, and we just cock right over into triangle pose. Back of my hand presses in to the lower shin, and I really open up. Soften this line in the groin by pushing back, trying to get the femur into the back of that joint. Breathe into it and hold. You want to be technically uh, more correct, you'll look up to your palm, you look up to the ceiling, to your extended arm. And breathe. Triangle pose. And people with stretchy hamstrings, this is a very easy pose to find. For those that don't have stretchy hamstrings, not so much. So from here, you're going to push the left shin forward to bend the knee and come back up 
to the Warrior II mode. This time, the left forearm slides down onto the left thigh, palm faces the ceiling, and you reach across. So you're really, you can really get into the inside of your armpit in this pose. Really press into the outer edge of your foot and reach away from it. You're still turning your ribs. Breathe into it as a side angle. And again, this is a pose to try to find ease wherever you can. Good luck with that. And then straighten the leg and come back up. Okay. So now we've done all of the standing poses, the, the, uh, the ones that are in the warrior two stance. We're now going to go in to using the chair. So you're going to step one foot together into the center and then the other. And we're going to do revolve triangle. So I'm going to bring the, the chair onto my mat. And I'm going to step back. And because I have a rung underneath, I'm going to step onto it. If you don't, just step so that you're close to the edge of the, the, um, the chair legs. I'm going to start on my right side. So my right toes are right on the, the um, bottom, bottom part of the chair. And I'm stepping back a bit with the left. And my toes are turned in. They're not straight square. They're turned out a little bit so that I have a bit of an angle on that back foot. And here, it's important to turn and face your chair. So I'm not facing out. I'm going to turn and face the chair. So you bring this hip forward, this hip back. And then we're going to hinge forward over the chair. So we're keeping our sacrum back, and we're going to hinge. Place your hands on the seat of the chair. And then, to get into a revolved triangle, you're going to take your left hand over to the center of the chair. So that's where it is now. Then I'm going to transfer my right hand onto my hip crease. And I'm still trying to drive that hip back. I'm going to turn over to the right. And when I feel like I've twisted my upper body enough as far as it's going to go, then I reach my arm up. We're working to have these two shoulders in alignment. Press through that back heel to really keep you secure. And use the chair as much as you need. If your twist doesn't feel that intense, you can slide your hand over to the other side of the chair if you want and use that chair to twist. This is revolve triangle. It's a pretty intense pose. It's probably the most intense of the, the 12. We're going to breathe into this. And then you're going to come back down and place both hands on the side of the, the chair. And then I want you to step back and place both feet in line. And I love the way this feels. You can soften your knees and stick your butt back and then reach your arms forward and let your upper body come through your arms. This feels really good on the, on the back. Just take a little bit of a breath here. And then you're gonna step forward with the left foot. So my toes are right by the, uh, uh, mine are on my chair thing, but if you don't have this kind of a setup, just step them forward. Okay, so from here, stand up completely. You don't lose your balance. And again, you're going to try to get your hips in alignment. So this right hip is going to need to come forward. The left hip is going to have to drive back a bit so that I can line these two up. They are right now right across from each other. And you hinge over this point. So with my, my hands right in the hip crease, I'm going to hinge forward. Then I'm going to place my hands on the chair. I'm going to feel this for a bit. It's a big hamstring stretch on that front leg. And just breathe here. And then you're going to slide the right hand into the center of the chair, or a little past center if that's easy for you. And then place your left on your hip crease. Here, the top of the arm bone starts this pose. It's going to drive back. And as it drives back and open, so do you. Your whole upper body comes around then you can lift your arm up. So this is revolve triangle pose. Breathe into it. If you want, you can move your hand to the edge of the chair to get more of a twist. It really depends on what kind of twist your body has. Breathe into it. It's quite a balanced pose, which is why I'm kind of surprised that they have it as part. Breathe. 
and then you're going to come back down, place both hands on either side of the chair, step back, and really allow your whole upper body, soften your knees, and really stick your butt, on, take it as far away from the chair as you can, and allow your upper body to stretch, head kind of comes through the upper arms, this feels really good, you get some nice length in the back. Okay, and then you're going to come up and walk a bit forward. So we're now going to do a standing balance pose, so you can turn the chair around so that you have this only if you need it. You may not need it. I often, I like to have them, it's like a security blanket. So stand facing forward and have your feet so that your heels are hip distance apart. We're going to do tree pose on both sides. So you're going to start by sliding, I'm going to start by sliding up my left foot and place it on the inside of my thigh. Here the two are really making strong contact. Once I feel that really strong contact, I'm going to gently draw the tailbone down towards the heel, the standing heel. And then if you want, you can practice balance by bringing your arms up. And if you wobble a little bit, you've got the chair. This is great strength training. Breathe into it. A little bit of maneuvering. I can feel my feet recalibrating, trying to find the best balance. And just remember, we're always moving. So these little movements and stuff, that's just part of being human. And just keep breathing. And if you feel like you need to catch a little break, you can put your, your uh, hand back down on the chair. And then come on down, and then turn and let your foot slide down. And do the same thing on the other side. So get into your legs, feel the, the weight evenly distributed to start, then shift your weight into the left and slide the right up. Find that compact point where you can really press the heel into the thigh and the thigh back into the heel. And then when you're ready, you can begin to play with balance. Here I'm gently drawing the tailbone down towards the standing heel and I'm lifting out of my pelvis. And find a point that you can focus on or just allow your gaze to be soft, sort of just looking at space, nothing in particular, and I'm losing my balance. I'm going to recalibrate. You may find some days it is just not there for you. I definitely find that. This is great strength training. And if you feel too much fatigue, then just go ahead and let your foot come down. Because sometimes it, it's really a lot, of, a lot of holding. You're building strength in that leg. And then slowly slide the foot down and bring your hands back down. From here, we're just going to go ahead and do a forward a fold, but we're going to do it with a real extended um, heart. So I'm going to turn to the side so you can really see that. So from here, I'm hinging over my hip points. My heart is really reaching as far away as I can. You can soften your knees, but I'm really reaching. This is not a rounding down. And then press into your feet, the whole of your feet, and inhale yourself back up. One more time, stick your butt back behind you as you draw your heart forward. Elbows can draw towards each other across the back body. And then inhale yourself back up. Okay, so that's all of the standing poses. We're going to now come down to the floor and do the supine poses. So I'm going to move my chair off to the side. And you're going to come down and lie on your back. <clears throat> and have the, you may not need the block at all actually, but I'm going to have it close by. You definitely will need your strap. So have your strap right, right in hand's reach. Okay, so we're going to begin in bridge pose. So you're going to lie on your back. Let me move my block a little over. With your knees up, your feet are hip distance apart, and they're pretty much uh, underneath your, your knees. Don't have them too close to your butt, because if they're too close, it just creates more um, compression. So with your hands, your upper arms are on the mat. You're pressing the tops of the arm bones down. You've got your elbows right next to the side body, and I'm pretending like I have a stack of books across the belly. Press into your heels, and then float your pelvis up. 
take it up as far as it's going to go without a lot of herky-jerky, super intenseness. Try not to do super squeezing of the butt. And once you're up to the height that you feel is the far as you're going to go, you gently draw the tailbone towards your knees so that you can feel some real length. And here we get to hold this pose for 30 seconds. And just try to find some ease somewhere in this bridge. Certainly the two endpoints of the bridge, the upper body and the shoulders and shoulder, the, the upper arms and the feet are your two uh, supports for the bridge. And if you don't feel like you're working enough, then just imagine dragging your heels back towards your body and that will turn your hamstrings into uh, quite a, a fierce exercise. And then slowly lower down. So that's bridge pose. And relax, and I like here just to let down to widen my feet and allow my knees to flop from side to side. So with my feet about as the width of my my um, mat, I'm just rocking and rolling, and this twist feels really good. It helps to reset the back. Okay, so now <clears throat> come back and slide your feet back down, mat, so that your heels are on the mat, and you feel yourself completely one long line, like you're going to do Shavasana, and just settle into that. Then draw your right knee up and get the strap and put the strap right in front of the heel. So I'm just going to loop it. I'm not going to use a, the actual loop on the strap. I'm just going to step into it. It's easier to transfer. And from here, <clears throat> my elbows are going to stay on the mat. My upper body is going to remain relaxed. Now I'm going to straighten my leg and I'm also going to try to draw a gently uh, pubic bone a little down so that I have a little lift to my low back. And then here, you just draw your foot up, the sliding it across the uh, ceiling and drawing it towards your head. So this is if you have some stretchy hamstrings, this is something that no big deal for you. If you have unstretchy hamstrings, this is a lot of work. But I really want the back to feel happy here. So keep tilting the pubic bone gently down towards the mat to keep a nice little hollow in that low back. Breathe into it. You, want you, you can try to draw your toes back towards your shins. Fire up the back of the leg. We're holding this. This is a 30 second hold. And then you're gonna transfer the strap into your right hand and then turn the toes out to the right and then you let this leg fall out. At the same time, keep the left leg in its position on the mat. So I'm really stretching out into the belt and wherever your leg goes, if it flops all the way to the floor, that's great. If not, just keep pressing into the strap, getting a real nice inner thigh stretch. And at the same time, we're trying to maintain length in the back. So we're not rocking over. We're keeping our back pretty neutral and allowing the leg and the pelvis to sort of shift. You can draw your, your pelvis around on the outside to kind of let the leg have more space. So this is Supta Padabhustasana B. And then you're going to bring that up through the center and step in, have both of these legs. And let's just stay here for a minute. This will feel good. So put both of your heels into the strap now. And just like you did in the very beginning when we were sitting in Dandasana, allow your elbows to be on the floor. And then just really press up into the strap. It should just feel good. You'll feel your back. It's really strong, but it's also in a neutral position. And then go ahead and step out with the left. Slide that leg all the way down the mat. Heel stays down, toes face up, kneecap faces the ceiling. Now with the upper body released down, you begin to do the same thing on this side, which is we skate on the ceiling. And once you get to what you feel is your, your edge, you hold. And this is what we'll hold for 30 seconds. And honestly, I haven't counted, so I'm just hoping this is about 30 seconds. 
my senses, yeah, maybe a little longer. I don't think it's too short. And just breathe. These are really nice hip openers too. And now you're going to transfer the strap into the left hand. Turn your toes out to the left. You can keep your right hand right on the hip crease of the right bar of the right leg to try to remind you not to let that lump out and allow the leg now to fall out to the side, but you're still pressing into the strap. And once you come into that full extension, keep pressing through the right foot. The heel stays on the ground. The back should feel long. You should be able to slide a hand under the low back because you're not rounding here. Again, this is another osteoporosis pose and I'm assuming it's because you do really have nice extension in the back as long as you keep your pelvis in a happy place. And breathe. This is a nice way to end a practice. A lot of times, many of the classes I've taken, we've ended up in these uh, Supta Padagustasanas. Uh, it's kind of a nice way to stretch out the used muscles, and you tend to get more benefit after you've warmed them up. So that's why I put them last. Now you're going to bring your foot back up, you're going to release the strap, and then <clears throat> bring both knees, both feet to the floor with your knees bent, and then I want you to lift your pelvis a bit, and then let, allow the I even use my hands, I kind of like sweep my butt down, like I'm smoothing my skirt. Because we want as much as possible space in the low back. Then you slowly slide one heel down and then the other. And I've got a sticky mat, so I'm kind of scuffing down. <clears throat> and once you're extended fully, your feet are just going to naturally fall out. And the same, you snuggle one shoulder a little bit under, and then you snuggle the other one, and your palms remain up. And now just allow yourself to release. Breathe into your belly. And just envision that you're building strong bones. Can't imagine that that will hurt. But your spine should be happy with all that stretching, twisting. As you can, you soften your brow and release the jaw, release the backs of the arms, let your shoulders be heavy, let your pelvis be heavy, backs of your thighs, your calves, and your heels. And then you can draw one foot in, and then the other foot, and then go ahead and let those knees fall over. I have a cat who's decided it's dinner time. Take a minute just on your side. And then whatever arm is the top arm, use that to push yourself back up. and then have a seat, and this is where my block is gonna come in, so we'll just finish up. Sit on my block. I'll let my feet come under me. Find the comfortable seat for you. And once you're in the seat, with your sit bones really planted, draw the sacrum in and up. Zip up from pubic bone to navel. And allow your body just to feel this erect alignment. And I'm going to bring, bring your hands together in front of the heart. We'll draw one breath in and close with them. So inhale. Oh. Namaste. To the light in you I bow. And let's hope for better bones. Thank you, Miriam. He's doing his yoga.